Hey everyone, welcome to the second episode of Beyond the White Picket Fence show. I'm going to read you the tagline because I haven't memorized it yet. A show for life coaches, entrepreneurs, and sacred rebel that are creating life and business outside of societal norms. So um, my name's, let me introduce myself. My name's Krista Kathleen. I'm a life and business and sex coach and also a trainer for Inner Glow Circle Coach Training Company. And this is a new weekly show that I've created. So it's this show is actually supposed to be on Thursday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern. And so funny, but so annoying at the same time. I feel like we can all relate to this. Um, I filmed the entire episode last night, so 25 minutes. And the you can only hear sound for like the first 10 minutes. I was so devastated. It was such a good episode. And you know what? I was like, okay, that happens when I'm super famous someday. This is going to be a great story. But now I feel really ready to go because the second time I'm doing this episode. <laughs> Yay. And Mary, my assistant, is on. She can confirm that the sound is being heard. So we are going to proceed. Thank you, Mary. So first of all, let me know if you're watching live or on the replay, what part of the world are you tuning in from right now? And let us know what you do. Are you a life coach, a business owner, entrepreneur? You know, tell us a, a fun fact about yourself, okay? We wanna learn more about you. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna be talking about goals today. So you know, I'm a life coach, and basically a life coach's main job is being a personal trainer for people's goals. So people come to me, they hire me, and they want help with all kinds of things. Um, sometimes they want to lose weight and live healthier, or they want to write their first book, or they want to start a new business, or they want to be able to um, communicate more powerfully, or they want to be more happier in their life, or they want to travel around the world. So, you know, it doesn't matter what it is at the end of the day, they have something that they want, and they're not entirely sure how to get there, how to get from point A to B. So that's where a coach actually comes into play. And so the I created a free worksheet for you today. If you go into the description section, you'll see the link for it. And it is the big picture plan. And this is something that I do with my clients on our first session because I want them to know, you know, what is the overall thing that you want to accomplish and achieve during our time together. So lucky for you, you actually get this exact worksheet today. You can fill it out for yourself, or if you're a coach, you can use it with your clients as well. So I just ask that you keep uh, my branding on the bottom, but otherwise it's all yours. And basically we're just gonna be going over today of, um, I'm gonna be talking for a little bit. You'll see the bullet points in the description of why it's really important to create goals and how to do it properly and why you need to be writing your goals down and some other cool recommendations and tools and then we'll get to the actual worksheet that's why you should download it so you can be looking at it while we're going over it together and i'll be giving some examples from my own life and we're going to do a visualization as well hi becky welcome i'm so happy that you're here becky is one of my past clients all right, so um, first of all, the, the book, The Desire Map by Danielle Laporte. Mary, if you could look this up on Amazon and put a link to it in the comment section. I love this book. This book completely changed my mindset around goal setting. A lot of times what happens is that when we create goals, we do it based off what we think we should or trying to fit ourselves into someone else's idea of perfection. And goals need to be all about like these deep down desires that just feel like really good and luxurious and juicy and not like a, a, a boring goal. Like I need to lose 10 pounds. What does that even mean at the end of the day? Right. And like, why do you want to lose that? And, and what's the underlying feelings? And so there's so much more that goes on with goal setting. So we're going to go over all that today. So first of all, I just want to let you know, Goal setting is not just for New Year's Eve. If you only create goals on New Year's Eve, you are setting yourself up to fail. Because first of all, do you even remember the goals that you set almost a year ago? I know I don't. And I'm going to tell you right now, 
I am not the same person that I was January 2018. I am so completely changed and I have different wants and different needs and different desires. So you need to be creating goals every month or at least every couple months or every quarter. So that's every four months. And I like to set new goals with the new moon every month. And you can get an app, find out when the new moon is, and it's just it has this beautiful energy of going through everything in like your life and your business and your career and say like, you know, what do I want to work on now? And that's what some of the most successful people are doing is they're constantly creating goals. I can guarantee you they are not only creating goals on New Year's Eve. So we have got to get out of that mentality. Um, so number two is a lot of times what I hear my clients say is let's just see what happens. They're, they're scared to commit to their goals. And like, let's just see what happens. And you really want to take yourself out of that phase because that is taking you out of the driver's seat. It is putting you into the victim spot versus being in the driver's seat, being in control of your life. So no more. We're going to take this out of your vocabulary. No more. Let's see what happens. All right. Can you pinky promise me that? Um, so And also don't be afraid to commit. I know a lot of times people are like, I had a client a couple weeks ago and we were working on some business goals for her and she's like, I just, I just don't think I'm, I'm ready to put that in the format of a goal right now. And I was like, well, you know, why, why don't you want to say it? And she's like, well, if I don't need it, that means I'm going to fail and then I'm going to feel bad. And, and, and so I, I completely get it. I understand where that mindset's coming from, but at the same time, if you just, if everything in life, you do one foot in one foot out the door, it's not going to work. Like you have to be committed. You have to show up. You have to be two feet in. And when I switched that mindset for my own life coaching business, when I finally was like, all right, I'm two feet in, let's do this. Like that's when the magic happens. So it's the same thing with goals. You don't want to treat it one foot in the door, one foot out. It's okay to commit. And guess what? If it doesn't go as planned, it's not a big deal. It doesn't mean that you failed. Failing is when you actually don't take action at all. So if a goal doesn't work out, you can tweak it, you can change it, you can, you know, make it more achievable, um, you can shift directions. So that's totally okay, but you, you got to lower your ego a little bit and say, especially just so you know, success sits on a top of a big old pile of failures. And some of the most successful people out there have had to pivot and who've had to start over or had to try a new direction. And I can guarantee you with my, I can tell you with my own life, like it's, you think it's just supposed to be like straight line, whatever, but it's been like this all over. Sometimes five steps forward, 10 steps backward. Like it's been interesting, let me tell you. But it all always works out in the end. And so you just gotta trust yourself. Um, next, I wanted to read this study to you that I found when I was doing research. Very interesting. So it's a Harvard study. So I want to read this to you from the Elite Daily. But does writing down your goals really help or is it just a myth? If it really helps, what's the best goal setting strategy? Forbes reports a remarkable study about goal setting carried out in the Harvard MBA program. Harvard's graduate students were asked if they had set clear written goals for their futures, as well as if they have made specific plans to transform their fantasies into realities. The result of the study was only 3% of the students had written goals and plans to accomplish them. 13% had goals in their minds, but hadn't written them down anywhere. And 84% had no goals at all. Think for a moment which group you belong to. After 10 years, the same group of students were interviewed again, and the conclusion of the study was totally astonishing. The 13% of the class who had goals but did not write them down earned twice the amount of the 84% who had no goals. The 3% who had written goals were earning on average 10 times, 10 times as much as the other 97% of the class combined. And people who don't write their goals down tend to feel easier than the ones who have plans. So I will copy and paste this in the comment section if you want to read it. But isn't that fascinating? By having goals and then actually writing them down, you've got to write them down. You cannot just keep your goals up here. Like that is going to be so indicative, I don't even know if I said that word right, um, of your success and the amount of money that you're making as well, okay? And there's a study 
to show that. So I want you all to not only be making new goals every month, but to, you also have to be writing those goals down. Hence why I provided a worksheet here for you. So the last thing that we're gonna do is let's do a little guided visualization of something that you really, really desire right now, or maybe you've desired for a long time and just hasn't happened yet. And then after we go through this visualization, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to probably um, fill out this worksheet. All right, so let's go ahead and get in a nice comfy seated position. Maybe you're on the floor or you're on the couch. And sorry, that's my stepmom downstairs. Kathy, just so you know, I'm doing a Facebook Live. So you don't want me to start cursing and no. jumping up and down? And I don't know. Making noise. For the, do you want my stepmom to stop, start cursing? <laughs> <laughs> She's doing Facebook Live. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go into our visualization. So go ahead and get seated. Let's take a nice couple deep breaths. So breathe in through your nose. Exhale out through your mouth. Just let that sigh be nice and loud. Breathe in through your nose. Exhale out through your mouth. One more time. Inhale in. Exhale out. Oh, doesn't that feel so good? Okay, now lightly press your lips together. And slowly at your own pace, breathe in through your nose. And back out through your nose. Just let the day start to melt away. Anything that you are worried or stressed about, can just tuck that away for now and I just want you to focus being right here right now being present now I want you to give yourself permission to think of something that you really truly deeply desire at this time and it doesn't matter if it's big or small doesn't, it can be whatever you want. There's no judgment. This is your life. You just have to make sure though that you are giving yourself permission to feel worthy and successful and that it's okay to want this thing. <sighs> All right, and so now after you imagine that thing that you want, I want you to imagine what are you wearing doing this thing or accomplishing this thing? What kind of outfit are you wearing? How do you have your hair? What kind of jewelry? What kind of shoes? And now I want you to think about your environment. What kind of environment are you in? Are there people around you? What kind of sounds are in the background? What kind of smells are there? Like is there coffee brewing? Are you outside around flowers? Fresh mountain air, are you in a gym? When you accomplish this goal, who's the first person that you tell about it, that you celebrate with? And then think about your bank account. <laughs> What does your bank account look like when you accomplish this goal? Imagine the amount of money that you desire and see that actual amount in your bank account or maybe in your hand. And then think about if there's any fears or limiting beliefs. 
Anything that feels heavy that could prevent you from accomplishing this goal, that could be standing in your way. And get really honest here. The more that you can plan for this ahead of time, the more successful you're gonna be when it does come up, because it will come up at some point. Anytime you're taking yourself out of your comfort zone, there's gonna be stuff that comes up. And then last but not least, I want you to thank the universe, acting like you already have this thing. So if it's that you want your ideal body, you're going to say, you know, either out loud or in your head right now, thank you universe or God or spirit or whatever it is that you believe in, you know, thank you so much for my perfect ideal body that I've worked so hard for. I'm so grateful that you've given me the tools and the resources and the people in my life to help me to achieve this thing. So that's a little trick. If you always want to practice gratitude for something before you actually have it. You want to feel that you're already experiencing it. So that way, like attracts like. We activate the law of attraction here. And when you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes. Hello, how are you doing? Ooh, lots of comments. I love it. Thank you, Mary, for staying on top of that. So let me know what came up for you in the comments section. I'd love for you to participate. What is that number one thing right now that you're really desiring? And I'm curious, like, you know, what came up for you? You know, be descriptive as possible, or you can share your fears. You can share anything that you want here. This is an interactive um, episode. And also, too, it's good to, like, start typing this stuff out loud or telling people because it helps to keep you accountable, too. I do that all the time on my personal Facebook page. Um, if there's something that I want accountability around, I'll create a post. I'll be like, hey, all, this is what I'm working on, just so you know. So that way if I decide to give up because things get hard, you're going to ask me and keep me accountable. So you can do that here today. Let's practice accountability. All right. Oh, Mary, you said freedom and being brave and starting a new business. I love that. That's beautiful. All right, let's go through the three-month big picture plan that I go through with my clients. And again, um, you can download the worksheet. I'll put the um, link here as well. There you go. So download that. So first is what is your desire? So Mary already answered that for us. Thank you. So desire or goal, same thing. Sometimes you just have to try words in different ways for it to resonate and feel better. So after you figure out what your desire is, when do you want this to happen by? Do you want it to happen in a week? Do you want it to happen in a month, three months, six months, a year? And if you don't know, just, just try. You can always change it. Just put something down right now. Next, why do you want this? <coughs> why? It's so important to know your why because you're going to experience so much resistance when you're trying something new. When you are stepping outside your comfort zone, I even did a little drawing for you all last night. See, here's your comfort zone. Here's where you need to be, and this is where the magic happens. And any time that you are outside your comfort zone, you are going to experience resistance in your mind or your body or from your community and your friends. And so you have to be ready to face an uphill battle. And But when you know your why you're doing something, it's going to help you to get through those tough times. So that's why you need to like really be rooted into that. And if you don't know, you're going to give up. I've made lots of goals before in the past where I didn't know why I was doing it. I just did it because it's what I thought other people wanted me to do, and I gave up. So this has to really be for you at the end of the day and no one else. Next one, how do you want to feel? You know, why, so if you want to lose weight, like, okay, you know why you want to lose weight? Maybe, like, to look good and fit into a new bathing suit, but 
like truly how do you want to feel I'm sure you want to feel confident I'm sure you want to feel like you're just glowing in your own skin you probably want to feel energized maybe you want to feel respected by other people you know you want to feel sexy for your partner they really tap into those emotions and those feelings next question my biggest fear that could potentially hold me back is again be really honest here and it, if honestly fears feel so much better once they actually get out of our head the more that you keep it like circling in the hamster wheel all day it just feels heavy and that's how you feel stuck in life so just writing it out sometimes feels so good I do that all the time on my call my group coaching calls when people tell me they're scared I'm like what are you scared of and then once they actually say it out loud they're like oh I feel better I feel lighter it always works and then who's your team you know maybe your team is you in the universe or maybe it's you and your life coach or it's you and your partner or your friends or your parents or a mentor or community like you know really think about who do you or if you're in a business maybe you need to hire a web developer a graphic designer a copywriter like you really don't ever want to try to do things alone because we're only one person at the end of the day and it's okay to ask for help it's okay to ask for support and it's actually more than okay. it's necessary if you want to be really successful in life is you have to you have to let in help especially if you're a life coach you cannot expect other people to come to you for help and support if you're not willing to get help and support yourself that's like a double standard right there do you all understand that sorry I'm really passionate about you're gonna get me on the soapbox <laughs> so the next one is my commitments so what are you gonna to commit to doing at this time and remember we already talked about this two feet in the door you have to actually commit you you're not gonna say I'm gonna try so try is a commitment adverse word so I actually don't let my clients say that at the end of each coaching session I say what are you gonna to commit to this week and they'll say, I'm gonna try this I'm like nope let's try that again what are you gonna to commit to this week so what things do you need to commit to in order to make this goal happen do you need to hire a personal trainer? Do you need to buy new gym clothes? Do you need to go grocery shopping? Do you need to get a gym membership? Like, right, really think through the steps that you need to do in order to make this thing happen that you want. And I would encourage these things to be really small and achievable and easy right now. You can always go harder later on, but in the beginning, make it so easy so that way after you accomplish a few of these things, you just feel so good and then you get the momentum going. You're like, okay, I want more. But if you make it too impossible right from the beginning, you're gonna give up, you're gonna throw the towel, you're gonna say, oh, this is too hard. And we all do it, we all have these really big egos. So make it really easy. Okay, and my favorite quote is success is the sum of small actions repeated daily. I love that quote. Success <clears throat> equals okay, what did I say? Success equals the sum of small actions repeated daily. There you go, just remember that. And last one, this is actually the most important one that gets skipped with goal setting, is how will I celebrate when I finish? Or when you hit the first round of the goal or first level. You've got to celebrate. Like, who doesn't like celebrating? I don't know, but for some reason with women in our culture, like, if we celebrate ourselves or we choose joy or we choose to feel good, like, it's almost like it's a bad thing that we're doing. and we have to change that because it's okay to celebrate and it's more than necessary like it actually there's like a scientific study that says that when you reward yourself for doing positive behavior behavior that it, it creates like a type of reaction in your brain actually that's going to contribute to uh, moving forward with your habits so you you gotta remember to celebrate and celebrating is fun um, for me I actually don't celebrate with food anymore they taught us that trick when I was a bodybuilder 
Um, so don't use food as the reward. So for me, I actually use um, clothing and jewelry and shoes as a reward. And that feels better. And then I love every time I open my closet, I look at my new pair of sexy heels. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I got those because I worked so hard in my business last month and hit all my business goals. And it's just like a constant reminder. And you can't get that with food. So I'd highly recommend to maybe not use food as a reward. But it's up to you. Sometimes I do like using champagne, though. I love like going out to a nice dinner, um, especially if I've been eating clean all week, going out to a uh, you know, restaurant that has like a just amazing quality food and getting a glass of champagne and, and toasting. Ugh, I do love that as well. All right, so that is all I have for you as far as the worksheet goes. <coughs> Yes, Mary, I love this question. What was everyone's favorite part of the training? Mine was visualizing. I can't believe how useful that is. Yeah, you know, Mary, like I do a lot of visualizations in my one-on-one -on -one coaching and group coaching um, towards like success and desires and and they, people love it. And so, yeah, I think meditating and visualizing like that is so powerful. So I'm really glad that you liked it. Also, if you're watching, no, not when you know for everyone watching this right now um, please tag someone's name that you think that could really benefit from this maybe someone who's been struggling or someone who is a personal development junkie like yourself and like me like and that they really want to learn how to create powerful goals for themselves or maybe their clients if they're a coach and tag them in this training so sharing is caring right Okay, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Mary, for helping me with the comments. And if you have a question or a comment and you're watching on the replay, feel free to still participate and I'll tag my name and I'll come back in and I'll answer it, I'll respond. But um, otherwise, you're an incredible person for being here today. So give yourself a pat on the back. You took time on a Friday afternoon to work on personal development and self-love and self-care. And that is such an amazing thing to be celebrated. So yay. All right, stay tuned for episode three, which will probably not be happening next week because it is Thanksgiving. But the week after that, I have a really exciting episode planned for you all. And this is going to be happening every week on Thursday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern. So, All right. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.